Well, greetings again. This is Dr. Bill White with the American Orthodontic Society. And I'm going to talk about a deal here in finishing deep bite cases. And you have, you, if you don't put some type of bite plate in there, now deep bite is where the upper teeth close over the lower teeth. And I'm talking to people that aren't familiar with what we call them here. But then you open the bite up and you you actually raise the teeth in the back, brought them together some, and that gives them a little more f force down here. Now, if you've got a high angle case and a deep batch, you've got to put some blocks in here to have them chew on those blocks, and that keeps the thing closed while you open the bite dinly. It'll close down skeletally. So that's a different uh, ball game completely in here, but we want to see how to retain what you get here and how to keep from being tricked by uh, this tricks the person that owns it and a lot of times the people that uh, produce the uh, retainer. So let's just look at it how it is and I want to get my little deal going here. I don't think that's, yeah we've got it. Here is this young lady. She has a real deep bite, and when you look at it, you will agree with me. Now, deep bites don't just uh, mess up the purple person's chewing, uh, I mean, just mess that up. Uh, the facial structure may look real good with a deep bite case, but when you look at the teeth, the upper teeth completely cover up the lower teeth, and you don't see them at all. Now, when you're that way, people think, well, what's the difference? I can eat with them. They just are used to it. If you have a deep bite and your upper teeth close over your lower teeth, then when you go to move your mouth from side to side, these teeth hit and you have to open your teeth, slide over so you can't. There's no way with a real deep bite that you can chew from side to side. Now, I didn't do the testing on this, but they tell me that it's four times more efficient to grind your teeth, to grind them together to chew. You can tear the food up and reduce it much quicker than you can if you're just biting straight in like that. So anyway, that's a pretty much a sense that's much better, and that's what you're going to gain doing that. It's not going to make you look a lot better, except maybe this, if you got older, this shortness in this space in here might look, uh, might not look like it should. It's not a real uh, problem with appearance here. All right, now here the teeth are. Now this is a deep dental bite with a kind of a deep skeletal bite. And that doesn't hurt. So we're going to force what you want to do. You just, I can look at them across the room and tell what's going on in somebody like this. And I can tell you what to do whether you want to use a cephalometric, but we take sales on everybody. But now you don't even see the bottom teeth right in here. In other words, the teeth are. They're sticking up here next to the gum. We're going to look at that from the model side, and you can see what the teeth are actually doing here. You can pull the lip back like this and put a mirror down there and see behind the teeth, and you can see where the, the bottom teeth actually go up against the gum tissue in here. Now, that's a deep bite, and if you leave that all your life, you like it okay but you're going to be chewing like this, and you won't be able to grind your food up as good as somebody with their bite not so just much shallow. You need just a little overbite and overjet, and now you can slide your teeth back and forth like that, and you can chew much, much better. Okay, let's see what, how we do it. Now, we've, we know how to do that. We hook up these intruding wires, and, they go up like that, we bring them down and hook to these teeth, and they pick these teeth up. And we may, if we, the bottom ones go up like this, we can come in with one of those intruding wires, 
raise them up here and they'll pull them down. There's not a deep back case in anywhere you can't do in adults. I don't care if they are 90 years old, you could open their bite for them. And that is a fact. You can move your teeth all your life. And just don't forget that. And I've been taught that you can't after about oh, 20, 22, 43, three or four words of mine in there. But you can move your teeth. Uh, they'll move in the bone all your life. Now, the bite back here, the lower jaw is a little far back. In other words, it's, it needs to be brought forward too, and you need to bring this one back some. And your teeth are tucked in like this. You can't, your jaw is locked in there. If it's crowding your condyles over on the Retrodiscal tissue this is another thing can happen in a deep bite. You lock your lower jaw back and you can't really pull it out here where it wants to. And you can have a problem with your tip of your joint doing that also. But let's see what we did here. All right, so you see these teeth are tilted back. This is kind of a class two division two type case where the centrals are further back than the laterals like that, the lip pressures pulls that back in very much. And the lower are kind of crowded up there. They're fitting right up against the back of the upper teeth. You can see it a little bit. Now here we're jumping ahead quite a bit. We've already got them leveled out. We put them in a, that's a heavy round wire. This was a rectangular wire right here. And we'll put a rectangular wire up here to level all this out. Uh, we should push this tooth up a little bit or else you've got to trim it down here with the uh, inside of the edge. But this is 12 of 90. And I don't know when we started, but it, ta it takes, it, you can go through the case. Adult orthodontics a lot of times is just as quick or sometimes quicker than deciduous uh, or early orthodontics. Now this cap, cup, cusper tooth is coming right down in the place where when this levels out, it'll be in place too. But it's right in the center, so the uh, midline is off to some extent. All right, so you've widened the arch out, and you've got the bottom of the wind widened out and leveled. And we're down to this point. We took this off. This is in, in 91 now. And this tooth right here really ought to be reduced a little. This is coming across the gingival tissue up there. You can bring that and make it look a little better, a bit better. Here we've got it widened out, and the cuspids are coming down in the right place, and that's in a class one relationship. Now that's the bottom arch. The second motor, the first motor, and everything in place. Now here's what I was talking about. We took the models, you can look at them from the back, and you see these teeth are actually chewing into the gum tissue up above here. And that's when we opened the bite, we brought that out. Let's see, this was 1989. In other words, that was 228.89. And there it is, 12-12-91. So 89-90-91, we had it to this point right here. I put some little acrylic pads up here to hold this line right on this place in our retention. I should have shoes, smoothed that tooth off just slightly right there. Now there's where the cuspid fit when they started. And we're going to bring the jaw forward. And you can't bring it with his back teeth. That's so we straighten these teeth out, I like see. And then we brought this back a little bit and brought this forward. These motors right here, the way that fits together, the lower motor comes in something like this. And it fits up in this area. And then you're going to have to move this back to here. This will come to here. And now this one goes to there. 
and there it is. It's done that way. That makes a twill of a difference. That person can chew now the rest of their life if they wear this retainer until it just settles in. But some people will do this. We've lowered these teeth and we've raised these. And if you do this, you need to put something that has these teeth coming up against a bite plate. And if they wear that retainer, that case will stay like it is right there. And if it tends to go back, if they wear it for a long time, then the pressures kind of equal out in, in there. But people will leave their retainer out or lose it somewhere for just a week or two. And the case would be open like this. And now the teeth are in the right position. They lose their retainer. They'll all deepen again. So when they deepen or they start to deepen, they move up, say, just a millimeter or two, and now I find the retainer and I put it in my mouth, and what happens? The retainer makes the teeth hurt. Why does it make the hurt? Why does it make it hurt? The, the bite was here, it deepens to here. We had a bite plate here, you put the retainer in. Now these teeth touch here, and nothing else in the mouth touches until you get back to the condyles hit in the fossa. And as long as you got the retainer in there, they're going to hit every time you swallow, every time you move your teeth around or chew, it's going to do that. So they come in, and this has happened to me just over and over on deep bite cases. They'll come in and say, well, I left this out or I lost it or something, but my retainer doesn't fit anymore, it's warped. So you put it in, I don't even look in their mouth, I just say, well, hand me the old retainer, and I put it on the model that I made it on, and you can see the retainer had not moved at all. It just comes in, but the bite has gone from here where you had it, it was here when you started, you know, it'll tend to go back, it moved up to here. Now you put your retainer in, you've got a bite plate underneath here, you close these, hit the bite plate, then there's nothing touches until the condyles hit back here, and that puts a uncanny load on the condyles back here in the retrodiscal tissue, and then the teeth will, it'll hurt, the jaw gets to hurt it, so they take the retainer out, it stops hurting. Put it back, it'll start hurting. So the natural thing is think is something wrong with this blooming retainer. It's not the retainer, it's because their teeth have gone back. And so if you learn this and you have this happen, you don't have to go back here and remake the retainer at all. You have to go back here and put some little box on the back teeth and let these teeth come back where they were. And now you can take the box out and this will hit up here, and this will hit here, and it takes a load off of the condyles back here in the back, and it will stop hurting. And that's what you have to do. And that is a thing that will trick you and fool you, or it will fool the person nearly every time. So you try to for inform them when you retain a deep bite case, let them know that that's going to happen if they leave it out for any length of time. Sometimes just take it out and don't it put it in for three or four days, it'll deepen some. All right, here the other side, see, this is moved out. We put this tooth back in place. We move these way out here. They had a problem with the uh, condyles and everything else. There's a little problem with the uh, TMJ problem because of the jaw wanting to come back I mean, want to go out, but it couldn't. So the teeth were holding it back. Now there the teeth were when we started. Now there they are after it. That's 1991. This was 89. It was like that. And in just that short time, you had it where it stopped hurting. And if they wear that retainer and stay with it, it'll settle in at that position but it takes a while before it does. Now, 
it is ridiculous to think that you could go your life without bothering this, with a deep bite case like that. Your joints won't function properly back here. So we fix that up, the joints function good. The teeth stay that way if you wear your retainer for several years. You can't just, it, nobody can tell you you can put a retainer in and wear it so, all the time for two months and two months. That is a stick, stupid way to do it. You gotta put a retainer in and wear it till the bite stops trying to close back again. It'll finally close everything in order and get to where the pressure up and down is where it can put up with it and the pressure on the cheeks and the lips uh, comes in right. All right, here the deal is we'll increase this a little bit right there because when we lower these and raise these, it picks these up when you bring these down. It picks these these will go down when these go up right here. You get the exact force pushing this down as you do back in the back. It'll be the same force going down when this is the force going up. And this is just the way physics is. That's the way that it's going to be. And it's about four times harder to intrude teeth than it is to extrude teeth. So you have to go and wear this retainer till this jaw gets down but keeps it in a proper order till it quits trying to close up. And then the muscle force will be equal to keeping the, the erupting force of the teeth will hold the vertical dimension of this to the right position. Okay, now here's the head of the condyle. You see it right in here and when if, if if you bite with it, close this will go up further and press into that tissue. Here the condyle is out in the open right there. Now you, these are transcranial x-rays. We took them. Anybody's having a problem with it, we do that. And she's uh, eight, age 38 time we took these. And this is uh, 1988 at this point. And now she had a wisdom tooth came in here, nothing underneath, no wisdom tooth on the bottom. This wisdom tooth is sitting right up here. And this was, we could use this if we had to, but this one is such in the past. Probably we had her go to an oral surgeon and, and he just took both wisdom teeth out since they had no lower wisdom teeth. Now here it is. In 12 of 88, the wisdom teeth are gone up here and nothing formed down there. She has a root canal done on one of the molars. And this, here the case is, is 91 and it's still holding. Well, and this is our lady. And this is the way it looks. She's got a different set of teeth and she can chew from side to side. <laughs> We wore this little hump on here to keep that wire from moving those teeth out, keep it from deepening. And now this lady will have this when she's 95 years old if she just stays, stays with this for a while. So there, this is holding. This is 95. And she's not that old yet. But that's where we, when we started this blue eyes back here. So. The other side of the mouth the same way. This tooth was broken off or something and it was thicker area here so it had to take a little hump there for it. Back here this cuspid is coming down in the deal. And this is worthwhile. If it's nothing else, the person can chew better, but they look better, but yes they didn't look that bad when you started. So I would close this out. Thank you for watching and you join our group and subscribe to our channel. We appreciate you. I don't know where you are in any parts of this world, uh, but I know we have over 5,000 people who subscribe to this and these people, this will show up on your 
record. Every time we do one, it'll show up for you. So join us and subscribe to our program. Thank you for this, and I'm going to close out.